This Faith and Finance podcast is underwritten in part by Sound Mind Investing. For more than 30 years, do it yourself investors have relied on SMI for proven strategies and trustworthy guidance. SMI helps people build wealth so they can provide for their families, prepare for the future, and give generously. Learn more at soundmindinvesting.org. Just when you think Congress can't do anything right, they go ahead and pass the SECURE Act 2.0. I'm Rob West. There are actually a lot of right things in the latest version of this legislation, which was signed into law a few months ago. I'll talk about how it affects your retirement, whether you're in it or still saving for it. Then it's on to your calls at 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. This is Faith and Finance, biblical wisdom for your financial decisions. Okay, a little background first. Congress loves acronyms, so understand that SECURE stands for Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement. The first SECURE Act was passed in 2019 and made several improvements to make retirement saving easier. The latest version, the SECURE Act 2.0, as it has come to be known, builds on that, starting with changes to required minimum distributions that you'll have to take in retirement. The age for taking your RMD has been increased from 73 to 75 if you turn 72 after January 1st of 2023 and and that takes effect this year. That means you'll have an extra two years to build your retirement savings before making a mandatory withdrawal and paying taxes on that money. That's a definite improvement. A few more RMD improvements starting in 2024. If you have a Roth account with your 401k or 403b plan, you'll no longer have to take RMDs from that account during your lifetime. Also, if you're late taking an RMD or you miss one, the penalty has been reduced from 50% of the RMD to 25% starting this year. And if you correct the mistake within what's called a timely manner, the penalty is further reduced to 10%. The new legislation also makes things easier if you're struggling to pay off student loans and save for retirement. Employers with 401k plans, 403b plans, governmental 457b plans, and simple IRAs now have the option to match contributions on qualified student loan payments to your retirement account. That means your loan payments will be treated as elective deferrals just like your retirement contributions. Now, you know how we're always telling you to have an emergency fund in place with three to six months living expenses? Well, the SECURE Act 2.0 will now give you a place to store those funds where they can make greater gains than in a savings account. Employers now have the option of adding a Roth emergency fund to their plans for most employees. Participants will be able to make limited contributions to those special Roth accounts and have penalty-free access to those funds when needed. And bonus, those contributions will be eligible for employer matches. That, as they say, is a game changer. If you've been late making contributions to your retirement plan, there's also an increase in catch-up contributions. Starting in January of next year, if you are between ages 60 and 63, you'll be able to make larger contributions to your employer plan. The new limit will be $10,000 or 50% of the regular catch-up amount, whichever is greater, and that will be indexed to inflation. The IRA catch-up amount stays at $1,000, but that will also be indexed to inflation. Starting on January 1st, 2025, individuals age 60 to 63 will be able to make larger catch-up contributions to employer-based retirement plans. The limit for people in that age range will be the greater of $10,000 or 50% more than the regular catch-up amount indexed to inflation. Also, the current IRA catch-up contribution amount of $1,000 will be indexed for inflation starting in 2024. 
Now, if you're starting to think that Congress did all of this out of the goodness of their hearts, keep in mind that many of these new provisions are aimed at increasing Roth contributions. Since those contributions are made with after-tax money, it means that Uncle Sam gets his cut now instead of having to wait. An example in the new legislation is that Roth accounts in company 401k and 403b plans are now eligible for matching employer contributions. But to be fair, increasing Roth contributions also works to the benefit of younger investors who are likely to be in a lower tax bracket now rather than later in life. Proverbs 21.20 tells us precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it, and it would certainly be wise to take advantage of all of these changes in the rules for retirement savings. All right, your calls are next. 800-525-7000. We'll be right back. We are grateful for support from LightPoint Portfolios, which seeks out family and faith-friendly investments for 401k and 403b plans, integrating faith values and fiduciary duty. LightPoint Portfolios offers retirement plans for a variety of organizations such as businesses, nonprofits, and churches. And we're grateful for their sponsorship of the Faith and Finance Program. More information is available at lightpointportfolios.com. If you enjoy this radio program, you're going to love all of the many different resources waiting for you at faithfi.com and the FaithFi app. You'll find powerful wisdom, free podcasts, articles, videos, and more from leading voices such as Randy Alcorn, Howard Dayton, Ron Blue, and our own Rob West. Grow in wisdom and knowledge by connecting with a community of thousands of Christians striving to be good and faithful stewards at faithfi.com or by downloading the FaithFi app. Welcome back. This is Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West. We're taking your calls today, 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. By the way, you don't have to call. Just send an email, askrob at faithfi.com. That's askrob at faith, the letters F-I dot com. Hey, just a quick note before we head back to the phones. You know, often we're getting calls from many of you and emails who are looking for options for what I call faithful investing. You want to apply your biblical values to the investment decisions you're making, and you're wondering, where do I go to do that? I mean, I could seek out an advisor, but what are even those fund, mutual fund families or investment companies offering exchange-traded funds that actually do this, that offer faith-based investments that align with my Christian values? Well, there's a great new tool by the Eventide Center for Faith and Investing that really um, approaches this whole idea of investing in beautiful. But at the end of the free resource is a listing, a comprehensive listing of uh, the mutual fund families and exchange-traded funds that uh, really are faith-based in their approach. And so if you're looking to explore these mutual fund companies and learn more about how you can invest in a way that aligns with your values, I'd encourage you to download it. It's free. You'll find it at Faith and Invest investing.com forward slash faithfi. That's faith and investing.com forward slash faith fi. We'd encourage you to download it today. All right, let's head back to the phones to Chesterfield, Indiana. Hi, Richard. Go right ahead, sir. Hi, this is Richard. Yes. Um, I had a pretty simple question. Um, just need some uh, wisdom on what I should do. I okay. have uh, no debt except for my house. And I paid it down to about $10,000. Now, that happened during my time while I was still working. And now um, I'm retired. And like I say, debt-free, so I just pay utilities and and the house note. And I'm just curious. uh, I've got a a little nest egg of $140,000 sitting in IRA. And I'm wondering, should I pay the house off? Would it be wise to pay it off and stop paying interest on uh, the 10000 Which, you know, my my home payments are really not high, but uh, it will take two, three years more to pay it off. Um, yeah. So would it be wiser to, to go ahead and just take that money out of my IRA and pay it off? And you know, then, I think you um, could— 
you could go either direction on this, Richard, and I can understand with just 10,000 kind of hanging out there, you're probably like, why wait three years to get this knocked off? I could add, you know, maybe $350 a month back to my budget and own my home free and clear. And so I think that would be the reason to do it. Let me ask you this, though, that roughly 140000 that's in the IRA, are you already pulling from that now to basically make this payment? No. Well, well, I would to pay the house off. I'm retired, yeah. like I say. Okay. But yeah. I don't, otherwise, I don't touch it. I mean, okay. I, I actually add to it. Okay. So you already have other income sources that covers your bills, including the mortgage payment. No. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got, more than Got enough. it. Okay, great. And then my next question would just be, uh, ha- has that portfolio seen a dip in the last year like everybody else's? Is it down quite a bit? Well, you know what? I was wise enough to realize, I think the Holy Spirit told me, get your money out of the market. And so <laughs> I just have it sitting in a money market, and okay. it makes about 500 a month dividends. Okay, so okay got it. It just yeah. sits and rides. Okay. Yeah. So you're probably making a little bit more right now in money market. That won't be the case uh, in the future, probably. You're probably making a little bit more even than the interest you're paying on the mortgage. Um, And so, you know, you're really covering yourself with just what you're, you know, throwing off uh, an interest back into that portfolio right now. Um, but I think, you know, I, I like the idea of you just going ahead and wiping it out, getting rid of that mortgage, being free and clear. You'd add $10,000 to your taxable income for 2023, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't just go ahead and do that. I mean, the only other approach would just be if you said, you know what, I want to just let that money sit. I don't want to create a taxable event or, you know, I like the fact that I'm earning maybe four and a half percent right now in the money market. Um, and so if you've got a surplus, which it sounds like you did, uh, you know, on a monthly basis, just based on your other retirement income sources, the other option would just be to accelerate the payoff beyond the, you know, $340 a month that you've got to pay to the mortgage. Uh, you know, you add several hundred to it, whatever you have available, and then you cut that three-year payback into a, you know, a year, year and a half, something like that. But uh, apart from that, I think there's nothing wrong with just pulling that 10000 out paying the tax on it and wiping it out. And yeah. uh, now you own your home. I love that idea. Yeah, I've never well, owned a home, so this would be wonderful. But then, <laughs> you know, and I don't pay any taxes because my uh, Social Security um, is low enough that it yeah. doesn't um, uh, create a tax problem yeah. for me. But Good. I like the idea of paying it off, but I just wanted some wisdom from someone else, you know, that, that's yeah. wiser than me, you know, what to do. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I do like the idea. And I think just even hearing that little bit of uh, exuberation in your voice, Richard, at at the thought of owning for the first time your home free and clear, that was enough for me to say that's absolutely the right way for you to go. Here's the thing. I've been doing this a long time, and I've never had somebody call me after they paid off their house, whether it's a, a month or you know, 10 years and say, Rob, I paid off the house and I just wish I wouldn't have done that. I've never gotten that call, (laughs) Richard. So I'm pretty sure that you're going to be thrilled that you own this home. You're never going to regret it. And so I would say you go for it. All right. Yes. And and can I ask you one other thing? Yes, sir. Um, Is there anything I need to do once I pay it off as far as the uh, uh, title or, you know, do I need to go and register that or I don't, you know, I don't no. know. I've never done it before. So I, I yes. you know, if they, <laughs> it's just a new, a new, uh, God has just been so good. And I can't yeah. say that enough. That's incredible. No, uh, you know, they would, uh, there'd be a discharge of mortgage letter that would need to go to the county, but your mortgage company should send all of the required documents to your county clerk's office, notifying that your home is no longer bound by a mortgage. You may want to follow up on that just to make sure that everything's been reported properly. And then if there's any money left in escrow, the lender will send that back to you. But uh, that should all happen automatically. Uh, You'll get a canceled promissory note and an updated uh, deed of trust and a a certificate of satisfaction on that uh, mortgage. And then all that will be sent to the county office. and, And then you're good to go, my friend. 
Oh my goodness, that just sounds <laughs> wonderful. So I'll just put that title deed in the in the vault with the rest there, of the important papers. And there you I go. I like the idea. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Thanks for being a part of the program, sir. You're a joy to talk to, and may God bless you. If we can help you in the future, uh, don't hesitate to give us a call back. Eight hundred five two five seven thousand. You know, um, we've got to take a break here in just a moment. Uh, boy, what a what a joy to hear uh, just the uh, the joy in his voice uh, as he thinks about. Uh, his next step in paying off this mortgage. That's great. Uh, speaking of mortgages, you know, we have wanted here at Faith and Finance for a long, long time to have a mortgage partner, an underwriter that we trusted, that really shared our values as believers, that had a national footprint that could serve you in the area of mortgages. And we found that with our uh, underwriter Movement Mortgage. Uh, if you want to learn more about Movement Mortgage and all that they offer, you can do that on their website at movement.com forward slash FaithFi. Uh, that's movement.com forward slash, actually forward slash faith, <laughs> movement.com forward slash faith. We're going to introduce you to Casey Crawford, the owner of that in the weeks ahead. You'll be delighted to hear his vision and the uh, heart behind it and the ministry that they're doing. We're going to take a quick break back with our final segment just around the corner. Stay with us. We're grateful for support from Eventide Investments on the Faith and Finance Program. Eventide's approach to values-based investing is grounded in the belief that humankind was created in the image of God with intrinsic dignity, value, and worth. Eventide calls this investing that makes the world rejoice. More information is available at eventideinvestments.com. That's eventideinvestments.com. As a faithful listener of this program, you know that there's life-changing financial wisdom in God's Word. And FaithFi is here to help you and millions of others learn to be good and faithful stewards. As a nonprofit organization, we rely on help from monthly FaithFi patrons, supporters of this mission, to help us continue and expand our outreach. Has God provided financial answers for you through this ministry? If so, consider becoming a monthly FaithFi patron. Visit FaithFi.com and click Give. Welcome back to Faith and Finance. I'm your host, Rob West. The number to call is 800-525-7000. Now, we want to take the seemingly unending decisions you have to make about money, some of the frustrations that come with it, and the fear, the what-ifs that you can have about money, and hopefully allow you to live a life with freedom and contentment and joy because you're applying God's wisdom to your financial decisions. You've placed your trust squarely in Him as your provider and your creator and sustainer of everything, not in the things of this world. You're holding God's money loosely and living generously. And when we do that, I think we're not going to be without in this world trials and difficult seasons. Bible's clear. We're going to have that. Just look at the Apostle Paul's life. But uh, we can know that we've at least put ourselves in a position to do and be obedient toward God's plan and purposes in our lives in concert with Him through prayer and study of His Word. And uh, we hope this is an encouragement to you, this program, every day as we unpack those principles and apply them to what you're dealing with in your financial life. Hey, give us a call with your financial question today. 800-525-7000 is the number to call. Let's head to Mississippi. Hey, Don, thanks for calling. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Rod, thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure. Enjoy your program. Listen to it every day. Thank um, you. Uh, if, 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 I, if I could, I'd like to give a quick testimony of God's Great. goodness, His grace. Uh, about set, about uh, In 2017, I was uh, on the verge of bankruptcy, about to lose everything I had. And I, I've worked in the pipeline industry for, for several, several years. I just got really tired of being in debt, and I just prayed about it. And I said, okay, Lord, if you open the door, we'll do it, you know. And I and I've been working ever since uh, straight. I started out in 2017 with 220 thousand dollars in debt, and today wow. I'm down to about 47 thousand. Wow, so, Don, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, man. God has been faithful, man. He's been faithful. Yeah. And I, uh, uh, I have a, a question about retirement. I started okay. really late. Uh, I started in, in uh, probably 2000 and. 20, I believe it was, so only four or five years. 
Yeah. Uh, my company has a, a 401k. Uh, they match 6%. I have about $43,000 in that. Okay. Uh, in the last year or so, I bought a Roth IRA annuity. I yes. put 14000 in that. It's about 3.75%. Uh, and just here recently, I got a money market account, opened a money market account okay. of about 35000 yeah. Uh, that includes my emergency funds and saving okay. slash uh, retirement savings. Okay. So my question is, is what do I need to do with this money that I have? Or I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing everything I can since I got started so late. Yeah. Well, first of all, Don, let me just say thank you for sharing that testimony. What an encouragement I know that was today to somebody who's in that position. Maybe you were years ago with $220,000 in debt saying, Lord, enough is enough. I want to invite you into my financial life. I want to do this your way. And um, you are making some incredible progress toward being debt-free. You're absolutely going to be debt-free well before retirement, which is going to allow you to be flexible and free to follow the Lord in whatever way he leads and allow you to keep your lifestyle as modest as possible in that season. So thank you for giving that testimony today, sir. Um, You know, you're right. You're you're a little behind, but at, at the same time, you know, we just need to take from where we are today and move forward to make the best decisions we can. And I think you're doing the right things. Uh, having that debt paid off is going to be key. Um, you know, beyond that, uh, that what's most important is just to keep your lifestyle at a minimum. You know, living within your means is really the key to every financial success once we know that God owns it all because that's going to give you margin or surplus to fund your your goals and objectives that are aligned with your values. And at this point in this season of your life, it's putting money away so that when God redirects you away from paid work to whatever your next assignment is, you've got the ability to support yourself. Uh, you'll have some Social Security. Uh, you'll have this 401k and, and these IRAs. Beyond that, Don, is there any other retirement accounts that you'll have coming in? Uh, no, like I said, that's what I'm trying to figure is where yeah. I need to put some okay. of this money. Uh, I'm 59, I'll be 59 this year. So yeah. I'm probably going to look to work at least to at least full retirement age, 67 or maybe even 70 according to, you know, how my health is right now. Yeah. Serious. And I think that'll be key because if you can let that money grow your social security, it'll grow by 8% a year until age 70, which will allow you to have potentially three years or, you know, another 24% on that check for life, which will really help to close that gap. Uh, you know, this year you could put in 27000 in that 401k uh, for 2023 if you're over the age of 50. So I'd be looking just to maximize my contributions into that 401k. It's going to give you the ability to deduct that from your taxes, which will save you a little bit on taxes. And I think the key is just to get as much as you can going into that account for the next decade so that you have a nice nest egg built up uh, through all the markets, ups and downs. It should over the next decade, you know, be higher. That's going to be at least the very best way, I think, historically speaking, to overcome inflation and build some wealth. Uh, Do you have the ability to put somewhere close to 27,000 in this year? Well, I'd probably get pretty, you know, fairly close to it. Um, Okay. But I, I was I was had, had talked with, with a, a, a friend of mine who kind of does financial advisory, and we had talked about putting more in. But he says that if I do that, then I don't have control of the money. That's why we went with the uh, the Roth IRA with the annuity part of it. Yeah, so I'm just I'm I- lost on that stuff. You know, yeah. that's what I was wanting to ask you about. Well, I appreciate that. If you would have called me and when you were considering the annuity, I would have said, let's not do that because you can do better than three and a half percent over the next decade uh, in just based on history going all the way back to 1926. So I don't really like annuities. Uh, even though you're right, you are limited in your investment options inside the 401k. You're going to have plenty of investment options for you to choose, you know, whatever investment strategy you want 
And that's going to be the very best way to grow it, not inside an insurance product. So you've already got that. Let's just leave that right where it is and let it do its thing. It's probably going to have some penalties if you try to pull it out. But I wouldn't put any more in annuities or insurance products. I'd just sock it into the 401k and and then pick the very best investments you can. If you need some help with those investment selections, you could reach out to one of our certified kingdom advisors in Mississippi. Just go to faithfi.com and click find a CKA. But I'd, if it were me, I'd do it through the 401k and just try to max that out. Well, once again, our time went by way too fast. But tune in next time and we'll do it all over again. Before we go, I'd like to thank our incredible production team, Amy, Devin, Jim, Robert, Brandy, Rob, and Ben. Couldn't do it without them. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you again next time for another edition of Faith and Finance. Faith and Finance is provided by FaithFi and listeners like you. 